other end of the spell is absolutely deep. <sighs> Who knew one engine could make all the difference with hard work? I know Mr. Duncan said we were to expect a larger number of visitors this year, but I don't think even he factored in how many there could be. Yes, and just as I was enjoying myself at the mine, and putting up a brain snoring at night, I get called back here to ferry those pests about. I wish our controller could come up with a solution to this problem sooner rather than later. Thankfully, I have. The board of directors have approved the purchase of another engine from a fairground railway in northern England. We managed to obtain the engine at a very good price. When will the engine be arriving, sir? Donald shall bring her first thing tomorrow. And with that, Mr. Duncan turned and walked back to his office, leaving the engines with a sense of relief that some of the weight would be lifted from their buffers. Good morning, Mr. Duncan. Here's your wee delivery. Safe, sound, and in one piece. Splendid! Right on time, Donald. The engines eyed the small newcomer, who stood on the low loader. She had a dark aqua livery, gold lining, and a large number three on her cab. <clears throat> engines, this is number three. She is our latest acquisition, and I trust you will make her feel comfortable and welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you, number three. My name is Jock. This is Mike and Bert. There are four diesels as well. I'm sure you will meet them eventually. Nice to meet you all. I'm glad to have my wheels firm on rails again. Just then, Mr. Duncan and the CME, Mr. Farrier, walked up. All right, number three. My men will run the necessary tests before you're cleared to enter traffic. Well, everything checks out, Martin. Number three's former railway left her in tip-top shape. Splendid! Now, number three. So you can learn the line, you shall double-head the next passenger train with Bert. Uh, passengers, sir? Yes, passengers. Could, 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 could I perhaps learn the line double-heading a ghost train, sir? I'm afraid not, number three. You must double-head this train with Bert. Passengers were enjoying themselves and began talking louder and louder. What? Why are you stopping? I, I can't continue with this train. I'm sorry, Bert. What are you playing at? I don't know how you went about things on your old railway, but here, we just don't stop in the middle of an open line for no good reason! Oh, come on, number three. Next station isn't far, Ed. When we get there, we'll get permission to take you up to train. Number three reluctantly agreed, and the train set off again. I heard what happened on your trial run today. I'm not cross with you, but I must ask. Why did you stop the train so suddenly? I... I just can't bring myself to take passenger trains, sir. Oh? Why ever not? I don't think I'd like to talk about it right now, sir. 
Very well. For the meantime, you can take goods trains, but you must be able to feel confident enough to take passengers soon. Yes, sir. And then she stops the train dead right in the middle of the blooming line, and what does Mr. Duncan do? He lets her ride off the hook! Cool! His uncle sent me to the shed for less than that, wedding a fat clergyman! Are you still boiler aching about that? It was 50 years ago, and you're still acting like it happened five minutes ago. This engine has only been here for less than a day, and you're already talking her to bits! It's unbelievable how pig-headed you can be, Bert. Number three wouldn't have just stopped in the middle of the line for no particular reason. I saw her when she came back to the shed earlier, and she looked quite shaken up. There would be much more to it. I'd say she had some sort of anxiety attack when you were out today, and I'm sure Mr. Duncan will get to the bottom of it. And as for you, it would be nice if you could exercise a little patience and sympathy once in a while. Hello, number three. This is my wife. She has wanted to meet you. Hello, number three. It's nice to meet you. My name is Eliza. I've heard all about you from my husband. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Wonderful. I'll leave you two to get acquainted. I have some work to do. Martin tells me that you didn't get off to the best start yesterday with your passenger train. Would you be comfortable telling me what's wrong? Well, ma'am, I... I have a fear of passenger trains. Why? It goes back to an accident I was involved in on my former railway. I worked on a small railway which ran around a fairground. I enjoyed taking visitors around the ground. I had no problem taking passengers. Until one day, I was taking a train of young students around the railway. They were a loud and rowdy lot, and as we went along, they began being disruptive and distracting my driver. He was aware that up ahead, the points were set against us, until it was too late. And what happened then? The coaches and myself came completely off the rails. My driver and a few of the students sustained injuries. It was after that I had a fear of taking passengers. I refused to leave my shed. My the owners said that they couldn't have an engine who couldn't do their job, so I was put for sale. That must have been a horrible experience, both for you and those involved. I completely understand why you would shy away from taking passengers. However, we never know how a journey will unfold, whether you reach your destination safely or not. It's just a chance we all have to take. But we cannot hide from our fears forever. At some point in time, we must face them, as you must do with taking passengers. I believe you can face your fears, number three. Do you? I... I suppose so, ma'am. I will go and speak to Martin and ask him to assign you one of the morning services. I'll be there in the coach behind you for support. He's gone off and in fact, because uh, that's not the reason, decided to use to enjoy the waving time. He's gone off and the fact because. You can do this, uh, number three. That's not the reason, decided to use to enjoy the I can do this. I can do this. Number three puffed nervously up the line, but as the journey went on, she found her anxiety was becoming less and less. Finally, when she reached the end of the line, she felt much better. Well, number three, I've been told you handled your solo passenger run much better than the day before. Indeed, sir. With the help of your wife. I gathered she would. She's quite an effective therapist. Therapist? Yes, indeed. Eliza's a qualified therapist. She works at her practice in Arlesburg. 
She's very good at getting through to people, but it's a first for an engine. If it is alright with you, I would like to request a name for myself. Yes? What did you have in mind? Your wife has helped me break out of my fear I've had for a long time. She's restored my confidence. And I think it's the only fitting that I be named Eliza, sir. Well, if that's what you want, we'll make arrangements for your nameplates immediately. And so, two days later, the new engine backed into the workshops as a number three and emerged again as a light. Eliza soon became a welcome addition to the Arlesdale Railway. She still prefers goods over passengers, but she never argues that it goes away with any train she's given. Eliza soon befriended the diesel engines of the line, and also Rex when he returned from his overhaul. She still has her moments from time to time, but she remembers Mrs. Duncan's words and doesn't let it get the better of her. Bert would eventually apologise for his rudeness, but that's another story.